I'm about to present to you some sensational news in the world of bicycle design. So sensational, I've had to adopt a seating position. I have eight pages of notes, and if we had the budget for such frivolity, on releasing this news, I would demand an explosion effect. This is the news that I really think, having found this patent, that Shimano is developing a gearbox for bicycles. For those of you that don't know, a gearbox on a bicycle in its most basic premise is a gearbox that fully encloses all the kind of moving and shifting parts of a bicycle drivetrain within a fully enclosed system. There are a number of extant solutions already on the market and the likes of Pinion are probably the leaders in that category and I will go over that more. But the show of faith that I think Shimano are showing with this patent is really, really significant. Shimano is by far the biggest OEM manufacturer for bicycle components in the world and for such a large brand to have a show of faith in gearbox technology would be a really, really big news story. I'm going to present to you three versions of what I think is happening with this patent. The first is the full three and a half thousand word long report on bikeradar.com. This video would be far too long if I went through every single detail and if you are remotely interested in the subject, please read the article because it has way more detail than I could possibly cover here. The second, and in this video I will go over the kind of key points, and for those of you that do not have an attention span longer than 30 seconds, this is the basic premise. Shimano is developing a gearbox. I think it's going to be based on cassettes and chains within a fully enclosed system. Depending on what is claimed in the patent is true or not, this gearbox system has the potential to have lower drag and lower weight than existing gearbox systems, but also I think it's quite possible it could even have lower drag than an external derailleur drivetrain. As I said, this would be very significant and it would kind of herald in a new era of bicycle design because a gearbox is very, very different to a derailleur drivetrain. For those of you who got this far, we'll go into the juicy details. But first, it's probably useful to go through a little bit of a, a kind of history of bicycle gearboxes. As I mentioned, Pinion is by far the biggest leader in this area. They have a wide range of offerings in terms of gearboxes, going all the way from 6-speed right through to 18-speed, but all of them are based on kind of a system of interlocking spur gears that move about and give lots of shifting options. I'm not going to pretend to be able to explain exactly how the system works. We actually did a video a couple of years ago about mountain bike gearboxes, and that's well worth checking out if you want a more in-depth look at those. But basically, they're based on spur gears rather than a chain and uh, cassettes inside a box. Systems such as Pinion have some serious advantages over external drivetrains, and the most obvious of those, and the most appealing, is the lack of wear because the drivetrain is fully enclosed. As it is fully enclosed, you can basically soak the whole drivetrain in oil at all times, and because it's impervious to the elements, you're not going to get any issues with corrosion or wear, that sort of thing. They're also very reliable because they are sealed, and in a particular case with mountain bikes, as you're moving weight, from an unsprung area to a sprung area, you can also improve suspension performance overall. As there is no delicate dangly bits, like a derailleur hanging off the back of the bike, they are also arguably a little bit more reliable than a derailleur drivetrain. In terms of disadvantages though, the two key ones, and that is what I think Shimano is trying to address here, is drag and weight. Regardless of the potential disadvantages of any gearbox, there is a small but incredibly vocal minority of riders who absolutely are enamoured by the idea of gearboxes. Whenever we talk about a new drivetrain, nine times out of ten, we will always get a comment with someone saying, well, I'd like a gearbox. And there's clearly a demand for it in the market. The problem is, the likes of Pinion or Effie Gear or other brands who have had a go at making a gearbox do not have the R&D budget or, more importantly, the OEM clout of the likes of Shimano to fully develop the idea further. Again, I can't stress this enough, but the fact it is Shimano who clearly look like they're investing in this technology, the fact it's them looking at it is really significant. They have the time and money to invest in this and one would think if they're going to the effort of developing it, they also have a little bit of sway over the brands as to how they could implement it within their bicycle designs. The likes of Pinion won't have this, so again, significant. 
Now, one last point before I actually describe how I think this gearbox is going to work. Quite a large portion of the patent is dedicated to describing a very fancy special sauce lubricant and a way of coating bicycle chains as well as forming them, which I think is quite key to the potential success of this design. The language which is used to describe this lubricant is far beyond my ken. It is not within the grasp of my little assistant editor's head to get my head around what they're talking about with the lubricant, but what I can tell you is what they're claiming is that it's very slippery. Now with that said, if you can understand the language used in the patent, and I have contacted a few brands to try and get a little bit of insight into this, please let me know in the comments. I'm very keen to hear your views on this point. More generally, I think that the idea and the kind of physical makeup of this gearbox is also more interesting than a potentially marginally more slippery lubricant. So we're going to stick with the gearbox for now. So what you've all been waiting for, what is this gearbox? What is it going to look like? How could it work? This is how I think it could work. The language used in patents is vague to the point of being disruptive, and they do that for a number of reasons. One is to ensure that brands can't just copy them by doing a slight variation on a design, and the other is through an act called patent trolling, where they put vague terms in to kind of stymie developments from other brands. I don't think that's happening here, but it's just important to remember that when I'm describing this, this is my interpretation of what is said in the patent. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sure you're probably going to let me know anyway. In terms of physical makeup, the basis of this gearbox is kind of like a Shimano Steps motor in that it is based around the bottom bracket area. Indeed, if you actually look quite closely at those patent drawings, I think it's actually possible that the lower half of the gearbox would be mounted in the same area and possibly even in the same kind of uh, bolt pattern as a Steps motor. The main difference is it's a little bit taller, extending a little bit into the down tube and you'll find out why in a minute. To start, a typical spindle drives a chain ring which is located internally within the gearbox. In turn, this chain ring drives a chain which drives the first of two transmission members, which is a vague term used throughout the patent to describe what is essentially a cassette. The first of these cassettes would then drive a secondary cassette which is located in that higher portion of the gearbox further up the down tube. This is where things get really, really interesting. The proposed shifting mechanism between these two cassettes would involve the first of those cassettes, so that's the one closer to the bottom bracket, moving horizontally along the spindle that it is mounted to. A chain guide, which according to the patent, could take a form similar to a rear derailleur, would then guide the chain between these two cassettes. Now this is a little bit hard to imagine, but imagine the cassette moving side to side on that spindle, which would allow the chain to remain completely straight at all times between all the different gear ratios available. On a typical external derailleur drivetrain, the front chain rings are completely fixed. Obviously with a double chain ring, you're gonna get a little bit of leeway side to side, but generally speaking, it's almost impossible, apart from in a few gears, to get a perfect chain line on a derailleur drivetrain. It may seem daft to kind of dwell on this too much, but I really think the ability to run a straight chain line at all times inside that gearbox is key to what Shimano is developing here. It has the potential to massively reduce drag and wear because you're not putting the chain under extreme angles. And I really think it could reduce the drag compared to typical gearboxes. For context, any fixed gear rider will all too gladly or smugly, I might put, tell you of the kind of feeling of absolute efficiency when riding a well set up fixie. And it is kind of true. With that perfect chain line, it feels almost effortless riding the bike and getting back on a regular derailleur bike feels a little bit riding through treacle. The legendary Honda RN01 downhill bike took quite a similar approach with its gearbox, its very mysterious gearbox, but that essentially replicated a one by drive train within a box. This one is very, very different in that side to side movement of the first cassette. It is proposed that with that first cassette, it would move side to side on the spindle using a ball screw. In terms of being able to actually move that cassette side to side, I imagine it would be done through a small motor, and that is what it suggests in the patent. And if you're looking for an example of a similar technology, it's kind of a similar thing's done in Shimano's Alfine DI2 hub gears. So the technology is out there already. In terms of operating the gearbox, it is said that it would be controlled in much the same way as a typical bicycle drivetrain. 
So you would have shifters mounted to the handlebars, and these would most likely take the form of either an electronic or wireless shifter. The patent also makes explicit suggestion that it would be possible to kind of combine the shifting with a brake lever, suggesting they're probably going to do a road version as well. And indeed, in the patent, they say this could work for all types of bicycles. It is not just for mountain bikes. The one thing I will mention about this lubricant, but there is more info on this on the Bike Radar article, but the patent suggests that it would be possible and preferable to essentially have a small reservoir of oil sitting in the base of the gearbox, which would allow both of the chains and all of the cassettes and chain rings to remain lubricated at all times. There would also be some special forming in the chain which would allow that lubricant to stick to the chain thanks to surface tension. This would again reduce drag compared to a regular gearbox. All of this in turn would then drive an external chainring which would go to a single speed wheel at the back of the bike. There's some more questions to be answered about things like chain tensioning and that sort of thing, but for the purpose of this video, the gearbox is the interesting bit. There are a couple things I cannot answer from this patent and they leave some questions out there about how it would perform, and key to these is probably the weight. There is no suggestion whatsoever in the patent to how the system could potentially weigh or more likely how they could reduce weight compared to conventional gearbox systems. I think it's probably likely this will weigh a little bit more than an external drivetrain, but I think it has the potential to weigh less than a typical gearbox. So that is the basic premise of how this gearbox could work. Again, there's more details on bikeradar.com, but I'm going to finish things off with kind of a, an open question, and that is how likely is it that Shimano is going to develop this? And I have a few opinions on this. Now, for one, just looking at the patent and actually thinking about how I found the patent suggests to me that I think it's actually quite likely to happen. I make a pretty regular habit of looking through patent filings because I like harassing the bike industry. And I found this one kind of by accident. The title, and indeed the entire patent, makes no reference to gearboxes whatsoever. And it was only when reading it and I got past all the sections about lubricant, I was presented with a gearbox from Shimano, which is pretty revolutionary. The fact that they don't mention the term gearbox anywhere, not in the title, not in the patent, suggests to me Shimano is perhaps being a little bit coy in that it doesn't want news of this to get out. Well, tough, I'm on the case. It is also quite likely though that they may be just covering their bases, assuming that somebody else might develop a similar technology. But also, there's a few details in this patent which are really well defined. For example, something I never mentioned before is the fact it's claimed it will be 13 speed. There's no kind of vagueness around that term, it will be 13 speed. So if they've gone to the effort of essentially considering the limits of the design or the preference for their design, suggests to me they're quite far down the line with developing this system. If they are developing this, and again, looking at the patent, it is quite well developed. There's clearly OEM demand. Shimano is not really a consumer brand. It really plays more to the, to the brands out there who buy in vast quantities compared to you or I. And if there are brands out there asking for this system, they're probably going to develop it. Being generous and considering it from a road performance perspective, it is also possible that if it was more efficient than a typical gearbox, maybe even more efficient than an external drivetrain, bear in mind that this system also has the potential to be more aero, which I know shouldn't really matter, but this stuff does matter to quite a lot of people. And you know, this could be the next big thing in bicycle design. But I might be wrong. And at the end of the day, it is not what I, a lowly assistant editor, thinks. It is you, the public, who will decide, and I'm very keen to hear your thoughts on this one. What do you think of Shimano's gearbox, or proposed gearbox? Do you think it's likely to happen? If it did happen, would you buy it? Or are you quite happy with your derailleur drivetrain? As always, please leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm really looking forward to reading these ones. And don't forget to like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so whenever I uncover a beautiful story like this, you will get a notification.